as the rate of optical fiber installation grows in communication networks, the ability to simultaneously splice several fibers is becoming a requirement. Mass fusion splicing allows up to 12 fibers in a ribbon to be fused together. The ribbons are precisely positioned and a high voltage arc is applied across the fiber ends which melts the tips. The ribbons are then pushed together, resulting in 12 continuous fibers with a low loss joint. Secor allows you to increase your splicing productivity by offering the automatic mini mass fusion splicer in a fully accessorized ready to splice workstation. Some of the mini mass fusion splicers highlights are it joins 1 to 12 fibers in the most compact fusion splicer available displays all fibers simultaneously, which may be viewed on an external monitor. Completes fiber alignment, fusion and loss estimation in 45 seconds, following the touch of a button. Stores loss values in memory, which can be downloaded to a PC. Basic components included with the splicer are the power supply and batteries, heat shrink oven, tool pouch, power cord, and handlers for single fibers and ribbons with 2 to 12 fibers. Other accessories provided are the heated ribbon stripper and cleaver. The up and down arrow keys move the cursor through selections. When pressed simultaneously, they turn off the splicer. The keypad's enter or diamond key is used to confirm selections as well as to turn on the machine. The parameter key is used to access and exit the program menus. The plus and minus keys are used to change parameter values or screen contrast. For consistent splicer operation, it is extremely important that your work area and fibers be very clean. With mass splicing, absolute cleanliness is imperative. To prepare the machine and a 12 fiber ribbon for splicing, place the splicer, cleaver, and stripper in a convenient location. Plug in the stripper and allow about two minutes for it to warm up to the proper temperature, which is indicated when the LED turns green. Turn on the splicer by pressing the enter key and let the unit complete its self-test. A brief cleaning arc is fired at this time to clean residue from the electrodes. When running off of batteries, the splicer automatically turns off as a power saving feature after a period of inactivity. This can be adjusted from 2 to 60 minutes. If you choose to turn off the splicer manually, always do so by pressing the up and down arrow keys simultaneously. This allows the sliding stages to return to a locked transport position. The standalone battery pack with one camcorder battery installed will provide about five splices with accessories on. Press the parameter key to select your preferred language. Position the cursor beside Options, Languages, and press the Enter key. Position the cursor beside language and you will notice GB is flashing, which represents Great Britain or English. Using the plus or minus key, you may scroll through the other languages including E for Spanish and F for French. Press the diamond to enter the change. In the parameter menu, position the cursor beside single mode you will find the standard program for splicing 12 fibers in a single mode ribbon. Press the plus key repeatedly and you will see the other programs for splicing smaller ribbon counts as well as single fibers. Select a program by pressing the plus or minus key followed by the enter key and you will see the parameter settings for that program. More information about splicing parameters may be found in your manual in the section on parameters and programs. Exit the parameter screens by pressing P again. Now you should see the main screen.
place a heat shrink over the ribbon and slide it out of the way. Place the ribbon in the 12 fiber handler so that just over one inch extends from the edge and close the handler. Try to consistently place your blue or number one fiber at the bottom of the handler. Put the handler in the stripper so that the ribbon extends over the heating element. Watch out, it's about 170 degrees. Close the flap over the handler and close the flap over the ribbon and push down firmly so that the blades can bite into the ribbon coating. Pull back gently after about three to five seconds to remove the coating. You may need to repeat this step to remove all the coating. We'll cover some common problems in the troubleshooting section later. Be sure to thoroughly clean the stripper after each use. Clean the fibers with a lint-free wipe and alcohol. There should be no sign of residue on the fibers. If necessary, wipe the fibers again to clean them completely. You are now ready to place the handler in the cleaver. First, make sure the rubber clamps have been brushed clean. Then, wipe the blade with a cotton swab and alcohol. All the fibers should be parallel and lie across both rubber clamps. If any fibers are crossed, you can lower the clamp a few times and help to flatten and uncross the fibers. Lower the clamp, then gently slide the scoring blade in the direction of the arrow across the fibers. Push down on the lever arm or anvil until you hear the fibers break. The cleaver is the most critical and variable step in mass splicing. Treat this precision device with care. Always handle the cleaver gently. Never use quick jerky motions or heavy handedness which will degrade the performance of the cleaver. Clean the blade frequently to avoid irregular cleaves. After the ribbon is cleaved, place the handler straight down into the splicer. Check that the handler is fully seated in place. A magnet helps pull the handler into position. Close the electrode flap and look at the fiber ends. They should all be the same length, as well as straight and parallel with equal distance between each fiber. If all fibers do not appear in the screen or a fiber does not lie in its groove, raise the electrode flap and reseat the handler. If a stubborn fiber continues to hop out of its groove, use a cotton swab with alcohol to brush the fiber into place and close the electrode flap. Use care when working near the V-grooves. Now prepare the other ribbon as you have the first one. After inserting the other handler in the unit and closing the electrode flap, the cursor should be flashing beside automatic. You can press the plus or minus key to adjust the contrast of the screen, which also toggles the view between the two cameras. Realize that the fibers are displayed inverted in relation to the physical position in the V-grooves due to the optics of the cameras. So, your number one fiber in the bottom of the handler is displayed as the number one fiber at the top of the screen. Press the Enter key and you will see the fibers move toward the center of the screen. The short cleaning arc applied to the end faces will vaporize any residue. The splicer will proceed by checking the cleave quality and alignment of the fibers. The screen will alternately display the two perpendicular views of the fibers known as the X and Y view. The Minimass Fusion Splicer will then splice and estimate the loss of the fibers. To see the individual fiber splice loss, press the down arrow key. To remove the splice, release the latches on each handler, raise the electrode flap, and lift the ribbon out of the splicer. 
slide the heat shrink over the splice area and place it in the oven. You can secure the ribbon in place by lowering one of the magnetized clamps. Then pull the other side taut and lower the other clamp. Verify that the splice is centered in the protector. When you close the door of the oven, the unit automatically begins to heat for a preset time. The LED will change from a solid red while it's heating to flashing red and finally turn off at the end of the cycle. You have now completed a mass fusion splice. If you selected tensile test or memory in the parameters menu, simply press the enter key after fusion when you are prompted. When tensile test is activated, the spliced ribbon is tugged to about a half pound load. To see the values in memory, press the scroll down key beyond all prompts. Then press the plus or minus key to page through the stored values. You can transfer these values to your PC using standard communications programs and a null modem cable. The c -Core recommended procedure shown here has more information on this option. If you wish to splice single fibers, slip a heat shrink over the fiber and slide it out of the way. Select the correct handler and clamp as shown. Then remove the coating. If splicing 900 micron fiber, remove about two inches of coating and place it in the handler. Then clean and cleave the fiber as you did for the ribbon. Repeat these steps for the other fiber and handler. Press the P button, select single mode, and then select the program for single fibers. Press the P again to exit this menu. Start the splicing by pressing the diamond key. In order for your splicer to operate efficiently, it is critical that the splicer and its components be kept clean. Realize there are four crucial steps to obtain a good splice. The important steps are cleaving, fiber alignment in the V-grooves, the fusion arc across the electrodes, and video analysis by the cameras. If any step is poorly executed, the results will be unsatisfactory. Maintain a clean cleaver by frequently wiping the blade and clamps with a cotton swab and alcohol. Poor cleaves will be indicated as those having a large gap between the ends or jagged edges. In addition to cleaning the blade frequently, you may need to turn the blade to a new position after about 100 ribbon cleaves or about 1,000 single cleaves. Stubborn fibers which fan out due to static may be forced straight by wetting them slightly with alcohol. If fibers do not lie in the correct position or the splicer indicates that they are offset, the grooves, clamps, and possibly the fibers must be cleaned. Remove the handlers and use a cotton swab with alcohol to remove any debris from the grooves. Take care not to damage the grooves and never use metal tools. Also, clean the clamps in the electrode flap which hold the fibers down. If this doesn't work, soak one of the cleaved ribbons in alcohol and use it like a comb to sweep out the groove. 
This may damage the ends, so you may need to repeat the cleave step. Allow any alcohol to evaporate before fusing. An important component which can be overlooked are the electrodes. Make sure the electrode tips are clean, not white or sooty, and that the arc is quiet during the splice. To clean the electrode, loosen the set screw and remove the electrode with the tweezers. Buff it clean with a fine abrasive such as emery cloth, connector polishing film, or fine sandpaper. Replace them snugly. Be careful not to over tighten. A pitted or bent electrode can lead to poor splices. The cameras located below the electrodes capture the fiber's image and analyze it to determine the fiber's position and cleave. If there is any debris obstructing the view, the splicer may become confused. Remove the electrodes and use a dry cotton swab to clean the lenses when the displayed image is foggy or repeated error messages occur. Clean the LEDs located behind each electrode to ensure correct brightness. Also clean the prisms in the electrode flap which reflect the LED light to the fibers and cameras. You may use a cotton swab slightly damp with water or glass cleaner for very dirty glass. The current optimization feature allows you to make a test splice and verify the arc is generating proper heat for your splicing conditions. Select the program from the parameter submenu by pressing P. Select Options and then select Current Optimization. Prepare the ribbons as you have before and press the Enter key to start the process. The mini mass will splice the fibers normally. Follow the on screen prompt to raise the electrode flap. The left and right stages will move to the left and therefore move the splice away from the arc area. Close the electrode flap when you are prompted. The mini mass will continue the process by firing a number of short arcs across the fiber. As the heat softens the glass, the cameras will note the change in thickness of the glass. The mini mass will analyze the taper effect of the heated fibers and provide a recommended adjustment if the arc current is not adequate. Although the splicing process is straightforward, there are times when it can be very challenging. Now let's look at some other problems that may occur with the thermal stripper, field ribbonized fibers, splitting large ribbons into smaller ribbons, tighten fiber, multi-mode fiber, bad splices. First, we'll cover each problem and then we'll remedy it. During normal use, the heated stripper should remove the coating in one pass so that the matrix comes off in one piece. If the matrix crumbles or you're breaking fibers, proceed through this checklist. Do not attempt to adjust the temperature of the stripper. This generally leads to more problems rather than fixes. Verify the LED is green, indicating the heated strip is providing the correct heat. Make sure the blades, the heated strip, and area on the flap above the strip are clean. Use a brush or cotton swab with alcohol to loosen any remaining coating. Make sure the ribbon is no longer than about one and a quarter inches. Stripping long pieces will often result in broken fibers. When closing the flap, push firmly to bite through the matrix. By adjusting the amount of time you hold down the flap, you can improve the stripping, test both longer and shorter hold down durations.
When working with ribbonized fibers, the ribbon must be straight and smooth with no rough edges or crossovers. Anything other than a perfect ribbon will be extremely difficult to handle. Those methods which use a tape such as the C-Core Photo Tool are stripped best using the Micro Strip Tool. The coatings from these ribbons can also be removed using the standard heated stripper if the tape is compatible and the strip lengths are kept as short as possible. Position the taped side away from the heating element. Remember the heating time should be a little longer with ribbonized fibers, about 5 to 8 seconds. When splitting ribbons, the new split ribbons must have straight and smooth edges. If not, there will be cleave and alignment problems later. Titan fiber is a special rugged fiber made with titanium, which requires adjustments to cleave and fuse properly. You must first be sure that you have a cleaver with an adjustment switch that allows the blade to increase the scoring depth. If this setting is not changed, you will frequently find fibers with bad cleaves or not cleaved at all. It is imperative to clean the blade after every cleave. The fusion currents may need to be decreased slightly when splicing Titan. However, C-Core's tests show that standard 12-fiber settings are sufficient for Titan ribbon. A program is reserved for Titan parameters should you find you need slight modifications. When fusing a ribbon of multi-mode fibers, there can be great difficulty joining all fibers consistently, yielding about seven good splices out of 10 attempts you should use the multi-mode parameters provided. Cleaves must be very good and the electrodes must be clean. Open or neck down splices are due to the fibers melting back faster than they are pushed together. Make sure the gap between all fiber ends are about the same distance, the electrodes are clean, the fusion current is not too high, and that the Z-feed is not too low. An incomplete or cold splice indicated by a vertical line at the splice may be corrected. Refuse by pressing the up arrow and the diamond key. You may also increase the fusion time parameter by 0.5 second steps if the problem continues. If you are splicing at altitudes above 3,000 feet, you should change the altitude setting under common parameters. This will automatically adjust fusion current. In cold weather below 60 degrees, increase the prefusion and fusion current by 0.3 milliamps for every 10 degree drop below 60. If you have changed parameters and are unsure of the original settings, either consult the manual or turn the splicer on by pressing the P and diamond key simultaneously to restore the default settings and replace all changed parameters. One note about testing your splices. For a lengthy span of fiber containing many joints, an OTDR is a convenient tool used to measure splice loss. Splices in single-mode fibers must be bidirectionally measured and averaged to account for exaggerated losses or gainers displayed in one-way OTDR readings. High losses should be retested at 1550 to confirm the influence of a bend. Remember, the OTDR accurately determines distance, yet it measures backscattered light, not the optical power transmitted through the splice. Secor has more information regarding OTDR and splice loss measurement. The Minimass is a fixed V-groove splicer and will yield an average splice loss around a tenth of a dB or better. Realize mass splicing requires attention to cleanliness as well as quality fiber to achieve good results. In the past, fusion splicer performance relied on the expertise of the fiber technician. Today, with Secor's mini mass fusion splicer, the fiber technician can harness the capabilities of a full-featured mass splicer in the compact package of a mini splicer. 
The ability to mass splice where it was once thought impossible is now a reality. <laughs>